So I'm reading a book right now about the strategy that the Russians used in World War II to defeat the Germans, uh, the German invasion. And early on in the book, they asked the question, or, or they, early on in the book, they, they talk about the, one of the oldest military maxims, which is don't do what your enemy expects. And when I read that, I thought about it a lot, and then I changed it to something I think is more important, which is uh, to do what your enemy most fears. And this is, I think, a really important exercise for all of us who want to win in, the, in stopping the war against the natural world need to really think about. I want to back up a little bit. When I was a teenager, we used to play, me and my friends used to play these things called war games or historical board games where you'd have the Battle of Gettysburg or the Battle of the Bulge or some battle and there would be a map on the, on the, 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 the game board and then the different units and you move them around and you, you try to fight the battle. And one of the things we would do is we would sometimes stop in the game and then we would change seats and not switch sides, but instead pretend to switch sides for a minute and just think about it and think, okay, if I were playing this side instead of this side, what would I most fear? And then when we went back to our respective positions, we would oftentimes do what the other side would most fear. And it was a really important exercise in, 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 that would help you to win. And now before we go any further, I want to say that I know there are some people watching this who will complain that I say that I want to win because we need to all be cooperative and we need to all agree and competition is the problem and blah, blah, blah. But the truth is that, and I, the truth is that those in power, I mean, I, the truth is that when I was playing with a friend of mine, a game, the point was to kind of win, but the real point was to hang out with a friend and play. That's play where you can have competition, but it's fun. We're not talking about play. We're talking about war. And we're talking about the murder of the planet. And the idea here is to win. The idea is not to participate. And so if we're going to think about how we're going to win, we need to think about strategy. And if we're going to think about strategy, one of the things we should think about is what do those in power most fear? Because we want to defeat them. We don't want to play a game with them. We don't want to figure out a way to get along with them as the salmon die. We want to figure out a way. First off, we need to figure out what we want. And what I want is for there to be more salmon every year than there was, than there was the year before. I want for there to be less dioxin every mother's breast milk than there was the year before. I want for there to be more migratory songbirds. I want for there to be more crows. There's one flying overhead right now. I want for there to be more amphibians, more dragonflies. It's very clear. So how do we get there? And one of the things we have to do is we need to stop the war on the planet. How do we win? So one of the questions specifically is how, what do those in power most fear? And I know when I've asked this question before, so often people have not thought about it, but instead they have had reflective, no, reflexive responses. Like if you hit somebody's knee and their knee pops out, it's the same. If you ask, what do those in power most fear? All of a sudden, the mouth engages, but the brain hasn't engaged yet. And out come all the cliches that we've heard a million times, which is what they, what they fear most is gardening. That if we all raise our own food, then, or they most fear that we won't, we'll no longer shop at Walmart, or they most fear that uh, we will uh, say no to them, whatever that means. And... When people say that if we just don't, or, or they really fear us making an alternative currency. Yeah, which is why Bitcoin's doing so bad. And when, when people say that what, what they most fear is us no longer buying things from them, the first thing I think of is Union Carbide. Because after Bhopal, where they killed at least 8,000 people and probably up to 100,000, um, where Union Carbide killed, killed them, 
one of the first things that Union Carbide did is spin off its consumer products divisions to make it so the company itself was no longer susceptible to boycotts. So the point is that if, if they were, they don't really need to worry about you or me stopping buying from them because they will just sell to other corporations. They will sell to the military. It's, this is, this is there, there's a lot of insulation there. And so think about this, okay, I'm in power, what am I afraid of? What am I really afraid of? I mean, I'm not afraid of most of the things that are being done. Like one of the things that people say often when you say this is they say they're afraid of people setting up alternative communities. And they're not really afraid of people setting up alternative communities because they have protocols in place to deal with that, which is you ignore them, and if that doesn't work, and then if you ignore them, they will probably just fall apart under their own internal strife. And if that doesn't work, then you, um, then you buy them off. And then if that doesn't work, you just stomp on them. I mean, we've seen this a bazillion times. That's, that's not to say people shouldn't come up with these alternative communities, but that's not what they fear. And so I was thinking about this a lot. And I think if we start to think about what they do fear, I think the first thing we should do is take them at their word. And that's not to say they're telling the truth, but that's the first place to start. And it's very clear that one of the things they fear, it inconveniences them to have to go through all this rigmarole at an airport too. I think they fear mass assaults like already happened at 9-11. I think they have, they have enough fear of those that they are putting in place these, these, pro, the, these other protocols to attempt to prevent them in the future. So I think that's one thing they fear. I'm not, by the way, when I say this, I want to be clear, I'm not suggesting that people hijack planes and fly them into buildings. I'm not advocating for that. What I'm saying is, I think that's something they fear. And I think another thing they fear, as a dear friend of mine said to me very recently, but I think that they fear their heads on pikes. And I think that those in power have always feared those things. And once again, they have protocols in place to prevent that too. But I think that's a fear they have. And I think if I were in power, I would most be afraid of people who can't be bought off. And I would be most afraid of people interfering with my levers of power. And I would be most afraid, and what that means, let's back up a second, and let's talk about how, how people and nations win wars. And the way you win war is not so much by killing individual soldiers, although that's part of it. The way you win wars is by destroying your enemy's capacity to wage war. There were two things, really, that defeated the Nazis in World War II. One of them was the Russian army, and the other was the British and US Air Forces with bombing the German industrial capacity. And if I were in power, one of the things I would fear most would be disruptions to the transportation system, disruptions to my capacity to wage war on the natural world, and disruptions of my capacity to govern. And this, honestly, I would be annoyed by, but I would not be afraid of individual or small groups of people putting on masks and breaking windows. That would be an annoyance, but that wouldn't really scare me because there's not really that much difference in terms of actual physical damage done to the levers of power. There's not that much difference done between that and a bunch of frat boys who are mad because their kegger was stopped and they turn over a police car also. I'm not worried that's so low on the sort of 
infrastructural level. It is a target that is easily accessible, but it is also easily replaceable. I mean, look at the American Civil War. Yes, we can talk about the battles that gets the press. Battle of Gettysburg, Battle of Vicks, the Siege of Vicksburg, all of those get the press. But the real way the war was won by the North was through the blockade and through the reason Vicksburg was important is because it and the battle immediately afterwards severed the Confederacy in two. They destroyed their lines of communication and their lines of transportation for the transportation of materials. So what I would be most afraid of from a military perspective is, or from a power perspective, is any threats to my ability to exploit, extract, exploit, transport materials and to fabricate them into my machines of war. So I think for me, the first step in thinking about this is to look at those strategic goals of, of for me, that's what I would be most afraid of. And then the next question becomes, how do we, how do we enact that fear? How do we, how do we help, help those on the other side to realize that fear? And I wanna be really clear again that what I'm trying to get at, I'm gonna to go to a metaphor that I've gone to many times before, that if, if space aliens came down from outer space and they were systematically changing the climate and they were killing the Arctic and they were putting docks in every mother's breast milk and they were buying us off with computers where we can watch Netflix 24 hours a day if we want and they were causing the greatest mass extinction in the history of the planet such that stolid scientists can say they're afraid that the oceans could be devoid of fish within the next 30 years. If space aliens were doing this, I think we would have a more intelligent discussion about the question, what do they fear most than we currently have? So there's a part of me that wants to say that what those in power fear most is us recognizing that the entire system needs to go. But the truth is they don't care if we recognize the entire system needs to go. What they would fear is us recognizing the entire system needs to go and then doing something about it. 